one Chris Gutierrez join us in studio. Let us say hello to El Guapo, who is kind enough to stop by. Hello, sir. How you doing? How are you? The pride of yes. Columbia, the pride of New Jersey. You're repping a lot of places. Yes, sir. It is nice to meet Thank you. Thank you. Nice to Please meet you. Please have a seat. Freezing outside, right? It is a little bit. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Great to meet you for the first time Thank in you. person as Likewise. well. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Emotional night for you? Very emotional. 36 hours later, how do you feel about what happened on Saturday? <laughs> to be honest, man, it's like, um, <clears throat> still feels surreal, you know, definitely. Um, like I was saying, uh, especially like after the fight, it just felt like at any moment I was going to get woken up and be like, all right, we got to go fight. You know what I mean? It just didn't feel like it was real. Right. It just felt like I was dreaming. Like I was going to get woken up any minute and be like, okay, we still got to go take care of business. And it still probably feels surreal, right? Yeah, for sure. Because it played it, out the way in which it did. No, you know, I expected a, you know, like, let's be honest, it's Frankie Edgar. Yeah. He grew up watching this guy dominate the whole lightweight division. And, you know, I just envisioned a very grueling fight, you know. I didn't think I was going to take him out and how I did and how, how fast I did it. You didn't think that was a possibility? Uh, you know, if... Yes and no. You know, I, I believe in my skill sets and, uh, you know, I obviously I throw knees. But to think it was going to just play out like that, you know, if I said yes, I'd be lying, you know. When you got the call initially that you'd be fighting Frank Yeager, everyone was wondering. It was like this two-month mystery. Who's his retire? We all knew he was going to fight at MSG. He said he wanted to retire at MSG, but we didn't know who the other side of the equation would be. And then you found out it was you. What was your reaction? I mean... You know, it, it was a good opportunity, you know, so I felt like the opportunity arose and uh, I was ready. And when it came knocking, I opened the door, you know, so I jumped on the opportunity. But, you know, I didn't think it was going to be me. Right. I, I, I didn't. And Did you campaign for it? Did you ask your manager, like, let's try to get this? Was there any of that? Maybe, you know, my coaches and, you know, behind the scenes they did. But as far as me, I didn't have no idea. I just got the phone call. This is who you're fighting. So I was like, all right. Wow. And you knew it was his retirement fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, it was all over. Right. You know? So, you know, I, it's just, a, you know, a bigger, I guess it made it a little bit bigger, you know. It's, it's his final ride. You know, you want to see the legend go out on top. So I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I didn't look at it like that. I was like, man, I'm the guy that gets to kind of spoil it. But, yeah. you know, it was very bittersweet. It definitely was, you know. Um, you know, you were asked about this at the at the post fight press conference, and I'm just wondering. You have a history with Frankie. You didn't really want to talk about it. Yeah, it's, you don't want. No, I don't want to talk about it now either. Was th was there just like a was there a friction there? Uh, I said I don't want. I don't you don't want to talk yeah, about. I don't it. want to talk about that. Could it's, I ask if it was personal? Like, was this a personal fight for you? Mm, you know, uh, it's a little bit of both. You know, like I said, it was uh, that year was pretty shitty for me in general, and then you know just. You know, some little ordeal went down, and, uh, you know, that's all it was. And uh, nine years later, it kind of like, you know, life makes a full circle in a way. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But as far as that, you know, um, it is what it is. That's in the past. Uh, I wish him the best. I wish him, you know, the, the best moving forward. Right. You know? um, that moment when you, when you knock him out, like when you come to the realization, because he was out like stiff there for a moment. What is that moment like for you? Because you're probably really happy but then you, at some point, are you know processing the fact that yeah. here he is stiff. Like, how do you how do you deal with that? You know, uh, I'll tell you. As soon as I saw him like stiffen and, and fall, the first thing that went through my mind was like, "Shit, man, I, I hope he's okay." Yeah, that's instantly the first thing that went through my mind. That's why I really didn't even like celebrate at first, because I really like genuine, like the genuine, genuine person in me was like, "I just want him to be okay." You know, I yeah. didn't really care to celebrate, even though you know my team we had our own emotions going into the fight and you know the stuff especially the stuff that coach is dealing with and you know it was a big emotional roller coaster ride but yeah to answer your question when i saw him fall the first thing that went through my mind was man i, I hope he's okay and you the know? place was silent it, it was you know and, eerie uh, it was almost scary you yeah because when i walked out it was the booze echoed and the floor was just rumbling it, you know you really? can just feel yeah you can just feel the electricity and i was like man they don't like me here and you know respectfully so they have all the the right to feel that way, you know, I'm fighting against the Jersey legend, you know, and so uh, yeah, I, I knew I was going to have to earn my respect there. And it's a tough spot for you. I really feel bad for you because you get a win over Frank Yaker, by far the biggest of your career, right? Yeah. I mean, he's just a huge name. 
Frank, you good? Okay. Uh, that's Frank who's just okay, walking in yeah, here. Yeah. A little bit rude of him to just Let's interrupt go, the conversation. <laughs> um, okay, oh, there sure. we go. Okay. How's that? Is that better? It feels, yeah. Okay. Um, but I feel like you're not getting like the credit for it because everyone was just so bummed. Like I, I, I will admit, I, I was, I saw his daughter is there, his kid. I'm, you know, I have yeah. kids too. It's like, oh god, this is hard to process right now. You know, I just, I just watched the fight uh, this morning. I, I didn't, I didn't watch it yesterday. You okay. know, um, I just watched it this morning, and you know, uh, you know, yeah, I did see his kids there and all that, and that just kind of made it more like a, uh, that sucks, you know. Yeah. To see your dad and. Your husband like that, you know. I just, I just wish him the best. You know, hope he's good. How would you uh, characterize this night for you? Because it's MSG, biggest win. You're dealing with a lot, a lot. Like, is this the best moment of your career, or is yeah, it more of a bittersweet moment? How, how would you actually describe it? It's a little bit of everything. You know, it's bittersweet. It's you know, it's uh, you know, it's still um, like I said, it's very bittersweet. I'm happy that I got the job done. Uh, you know, because I still, at the end of the day, I still have a job to do. The job was done. But, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of other things that follow up with that. You know, there's, like I said, the thrill and the agony. There's going to be a winner. There's going to be, right. you know, a loser, sort of say. I don't really see a loser in that aspect. But, yeah, um, it's definitely bittersweet. But at the same time, I do find the good in it, you know. And there's a lot of good things that came out of it as well. Uh, but Like what? You know, like uh, the, the whole, you know, the whole thing with Coach Mark, you know, he's got – a staph infection that he goes to the hospital with and, you know, they find out he had, uh, you know, kidney failure. And then when they run a scan, they're like, you got a mass on your kidney. So, you know, there was good things that, that, that come, that came up with everything that was going on, but it's still, you know, you still have situations that you have to face head on, you know? Um, and of course you're talking about Mark Montoya, yes, sir. a long time, great MMA coach, factory X, where you train, um, I thought after the fight, you were emotional, and I thought it was because you were dealing with the emotions of just beating Frank Yeager, and he was out. And then you mentioned your coach. I didn't know at the time that he was he was battling this. And I saw the pictures afterwards of him, you know, using the cane and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, he had surgery. How long ago was it? Uh, shit. I mean, he got out of the hospital Thursday evening. And he flew to New York. And flew to New York that Friday, you know, like around two o'clock. Gosh, he was on a plane. W what was it like when you saw him? And did you know he would come? Yeah, you know, he was, uh, he, he made it, you know, that guy, uh, you know, he's cut from a different cloth, to say the least, you know, and uh, yeah, he made a promise and, you know, that guy's just not going to make a promise and not keep it. So whenever he was like, I, I promise, like, I'm, I'm going to be at your fight. Jeez. You know, it was, you know, he had every excuse to say, hey, man, like, I'm going to spend time with my family. And he, and rightfully so, he could have, but no, he's, like I said, man, he's just not built... He's built very different, you know. He makes a promise he's going to keep it. It's surgery on his kidneys. Got, gets well, no, no. Uh, so on, on his staff. Oh, on the, okay. Because he still has, he's not able to get surgery on that until December. Oh, okay. So they have to let this infection go oh away before, you know, because you can't operate when you have an infection. That's what they don't want. And wow. he's dealing with that. So it's kind of dealing with a lot right now. You wow. know, and it's, um, how do I say, it's kind of sad. You know, I, I hate to say it, but like, man, it's it hurts me to see him kind of you know, a little bit slower right now and, you yeah. know, walking with a cane because he's just not liked on the daily. You know, right. he's getting in there with us and mixing it up with us and everything we do, he does. So, no, he's like one of the guys as well on, on the team. He's on the mats every day and, you know, when someone's not doing good, you know, he's, you know, talking you up, let's go, let's go. And, you know, he'll get in there with you and to see him now with a cane kind of, you know, pushing through it, you know, it kind of like takes a little toll on you. Is there any part of you before this fight you're like, man, and it, it's not fair to yourself to do this, but like this guy came out all the way. I need to win for him. Were you putting that pressure oh, on yourself? Of course. You oh, know, man. I, that's a I, lot of pressure to put on yourself, you know, but it's, it's the reality, you yeah. know, it's, it's the truth. I'm like, man, this guy, you know, flew in, uh, you know, I, that Friday. And I'm like, man, for me not to give it my all would just be a disrespect. Yeah. You know, this guy's here giving it his all literally struggling to get up these stairs and walk everywhere with us and for me to go out there and just, you know, lay down easy and look for a, a you know, a doorway out would be a disrespect to him and his family and everyone that was in the process to make this happen, you know? So is he going to be taking time off now? No. Jeez Louise. <laughs> no, he's, he's not. He, we, we still got fights until December and 
he's going to be at all of them. Wow. He's planning on being on all of them. Yeah. And what are they saying about his kidney, about like uh, the surgery to come and the recovery? Uh, I believe it's um, December. He's going to try to get that thing taken out. Okay. And, you know, it's a, it's a little process like any surgery, but, yeah. you know, you can't keep a good man down. Yeah. He'll, he'll, be, he'll bounce back quick. Uh, the scene afterwards with you and Frankie, <clears throat> uh, could you share what you said to him? Man, you're a legend, and it's it's an honor to share this cage with you. And you know, I just, you know, I, I, I was like the kid, you know, growing up watching, and that's reality. I was the kid growing up watching this guy compete, and I always, I always pictured him as like, and I mean no disrespect, but I always was like, man, he's like the little engine that could. Yeah, yeah. And it was the smallest guy in the division, always, you know, being the underdog and would always prevail on top. You know, so like, I wasn't the biggest guy growing up. So I was always kind of like, was like, man, like sort of like me, you know, I'm not the biggest guy, but neither is he. And he's just, you know, prevailing and, and just winning. And he's got heart. And I was like, man, like, I, you know, I got to stay on that track. I want right. to be like him. So, man, it was just, it kind of took me back. I was like a kid and I was like, man, I just, overall, I was just like, man, it's an honor. And, and I, are you okay? I was just like, man, are you okay? I was just wanting, wanting right, to yeah, be yeah. okay. Did he say anything back to you? Yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, I'm good, man. He was like, you know, good luck in, in your career and, you know, keep going. Crazy. I mean, that is a legend right there. It is, man. It is. Like I said, it's definitely bittersweet, you know, because I'm sure everyone would have wanted, you know, to see yeah. him go out on top, you know, who, who wouldn't want to see a hero go out on top. And, you know, I, I don't think there's anything you should hang your head low on that, but, you know, it is a bittersweet feeling. By the way, that walk back to the locker room, you know, that's when the fans, were people saying mean things to you? No, believe it or not, I think, uh, you know, I actually got some some messages. I had people that were like, man, I was getting some like really bad messages up really? leading to the fight. Yeah, that they hope I get my, you know, my face uh, broken and crazy. Where is this? Shit. Like on uh, yeah, Instagram, like Instagram or Twitter yeah. and shit like that. And, you know, I've, whatever. But afterwards, some people are like, yeah, you're not so bad after all. You got a fan. Uh, and so, like, you know, that was pretty cool. But, you know, I mean, in the arena when I was walking back, no people, you know, were like, hey, good fight, you know. Okay, so it wasn't like you suck and all that stuff. I had a couple people. Okay. But, man, I didn't, let, I didn't let that negativity, you know, mess up my night. I was more focused on all the, the good vibes that people were sending my way and saying good job and man i got respect for you stuff like that by the way when you're preparing for a fight and you read that stuff like i hope you you know yeah like, does that mess you up no i mean no to be honest no i just kind of laugh and because they don't know you know yeah. they're just that's their hero you know and yeah. they're just like hey we, we hope you lose you know i wouldn't go to the extreme and say i hope you get your face broken but hey some people i don't know some people suck you know that's all i can say and, and, and this is an incredible moment for you, too. I mean, you've had your trials and tribulations as well. You have been through a lot. I mean, not that long ago, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you had surgery on both elbows, yeah. right? Yeah, both. Within a span of what, a week or two? No, within the same month. Within the same month, yeah. yeah. What, what happened, by the way? Man, just from years of wear and tear, I just had uh, a lot of, like, bone chips and bone spurs. And, man, I, I would, like, put my uh. elbows on the table, and, man, I, I couldn't. I just Kill. jump, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, man, just getting kicked, and especially my last fight, when I hit him with the el the spinning back fist, he fell. When I hit him with elbows, every time I hit him, I was like, "Ow, uh. this shit hurts. This hurts." And luckily, I got the job done, and the ref stopped it. But afterwards, I was like, "My elbows are on fire. It's like, this can't be good. I'm hurting myself hitting them." So, it, and it was the same surgery on both elbows. Both elbows, yep. Wow. And that sucked. I didn't think I didn't think it all the way through having two surgeries in one, you know, in one month. Uh, yeah, it was tough. What do you mean? Like, in retrospect, you wish you didn't do that? I mean, no, I'm glad I did it, but, man, it was hard. Like, it's just, it's hard. Like, it's hard to wipe my ass, you know, sometimes. And how long ago was this? Um, this was, well, I fought in March, April, like, close to May. Close to, okay, so not yeah, that long ago. Yeah, not that long ago. It was yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was, um, I had to wear these, like, sleeves to, like, to like help the compression and stuff like that. it hurt it hurt it was a process for sure but good now how does uh, yeah and how does it feel i mean obviously you didn't really have to use yeah them. i didn't have to use them i yeah. was i was i was telling you know the coaches in the back i was like well i get to use the new elbows today so we'll see how they how they work but just in the training camp and everything all good yeah yeah everything was good so i yeah. couldn't complain you know it was it was firing all cylinders and, and as far as your career like you know you uh, i was looking at your uh your resume your debut 
May of 2013 at something called Ring Rulers Spa City Stomp Out Hunger. Yeah. You beat a guy named uh, Dowan Pinckney. Dowan Pinckney? Yeah. Uh, what, what was, <laughs> this was in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Was yeah, this at a yeah, spa? Yeah. No, this was outside in a parking lot. And they, you know, they just had a cage and they had seats around. And I won't forget that fight. That was a funny fight. Why? Uh, because, man, it was, Arkansas was hot as hell. And they had these like flood lamps. Oh God. Man, and they were just beaming down on this mat and we were just, it just makes you sweat. Yeah. You know, it's like, the, it felt like the sun was literally like 10 feet away from you. And we were just, it was a sweaty mess out there. And he was punching me and I was getting ragdolled. And I, that happened for like two rounds and I finally caught him and ended up knocking him out. So it wasn't going well for you? No, it was not going well for me. Wow. It just, you know, he was, a, I was fighting at 45 and he was just a, coming down from 55. And he, he, if I remember correctly, he didn't make weight. He was still like in the 50s, I think oh like 51, 52. And I made every bit of 145. And the next day he was, he had to be like 180. And I was like, man, this guy ate the guy at weigh-ins. And yeah, he was uh, definitely slugging me back and forth. And uh, I guess he got tired of beating me up. Imagine telling that guy at uh, uh, <laughs> Spa City Stomp Out Hunger. What was it like for a charity or something? I mean, it could have been. I don't know. You don't remember? No, I don't remember. Imagine telling that guy nine years later you're fighting at MSG in front of 20,000 people beating Frankie Edgar in his retirement fight. Like, could you have even, was that even a, no. like. Yeah, you couldn't, I, you couldn't even tell me that. I would have been like, get out of here. You was know? UFC even, like, did you think it was, a you know, a possibility for you? I mean, you know, I, I, I wanted, you know, as a kid growing up playing soccer, I was like, man, like, of course I want to play in the World Cup. I want to. I want to be on these big, big stages. So, like, I had a lot of belief in myself, but also, like, where I come from, it's a little town, you know, it's just like, man, like, what's the reality? Can I really make it out of here? What's it called? Greenville. Greenville, okay. Greenville, Texas, yeah. So, you know, I just was like, man, like, and we had, like, one or two guys that made it in the NFL, you know, and I was like, man, like, but can I make it to a big stage somewhere? And that was the real answer. That was the real, like, thing for me was, like, man, can I be, can I be one of the, the one percenters to make it out uh -huh. and, and do something good with my life. So initially the, the dream was soccer. Yeah, of course. And then, and how do you transition over to MMA? Uh, I mean, I grew up, uh, I grew up obviously playing soccer my whole life. And, uh, that's kind of what it is in a Hispanic household, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, we was always doing martial arts in and out, but the school has never really lasted. And, uh, yeah, I just got in. I, a gym opened up like three or four blocks away from my house. And uh, it was a little, you know, a little kickboxing little spot. And I went in there and the f I just told the coach, the coach is like, can I help you? And I was like, what do I do here? He was like, oh, you know, some punching and kicking. And I was like, well, I got some experience. I street fight. And he was like, okay, Kimbo, go take this waiver to your parents. You're obviously underage and go get a signature. How old are you this time? I was 14 and a half, about to be 15. Wow. Yeah. And, uh. I he ran. called you Kimbo? Yeah, he called me Kimbo. Because awesome. I, I was like, at the time, Kimbo was, you know, yeah, man, yeah. you know, street fights. And so I was like, you know, I got some street fighting experience. And he was like, okay, Kimbo, go get this waiver signed and we'll see what you got. And, and what do you mean by street fighting? Oh, I mean, you know, you get into tussles in the street. Would you get into a lot? That oh, was kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Were you like a bad kid? Uh, What do you mean? I was a like, bad well, like, would you Would you get into trouble? Like, were you doing bad things? Or were you just like the kind of kid who would, uh, you know... I mean, probably a little bit of both. Okay. You know, uh, I, I wouldn't say I went and started fights, but if a fight was, like, presented to me, I wouldn't, like, say no. Got it. You know? So, uh, yeah, I found myself in a couple scuffles, and, uh, yeah, that's how it, it kind of started. From and there. when did you decide that this was going to be something you wanted to pursue as a, as a pro, like, for your career? Man, I just love, I think, the discipline of it. Uh. I, you know, I just, I started getting away from, you know, the hard-headedness of, you know, running around doing stupid shit and getting in trouble. I kind of saw, like, man, like, I wouldn't go out that much on the weekends because I was too tired from the whole uh. week. And, and usually, you know, your sparring day is on a Friday. So when the weekend comes up, I was totally beat up. I was like, man, I don't want to go anywhere. I'm yeah. hurting. I'm tired. My ego hurts. I got beat up. I, I'm staying in. And then it just made me want to go to the gym more to get better. And um, it wasn't until, like, as an amateur, I was, you know, I was doing pretty good. I was getting uh, Rookie of the Year awards, uh, Knockout of the Year and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I think I can go somewhere with this. You know, at the time, you know, your coaches are like, man, like, I think we can go 
UFC, what do you think? And at the time, I was like, yeah, I, I would like to. But again, I was like, what's the reality? You know, am I good enough? Will I ever make it? So I always battled that, you know. When did you start to believe that you can make it? Like there's an act, because like is it reading some of these uh, these uh, events that you uh, competed at, uh, Extreme Knockout 19, yeah, uh, Extreme <laughs> Knockout 20, Battle at the Fort, Battlegrounds MMA, CSS, uh, C, no, C, SCS, excuse me. Uh, obviously, you had the World Series of Fighting fights. You had the Bellator fight, but like there was a lot of random spots all yeah. over the place. When did you start to believe like this is actually something that you can, you know, Man, succeed in and make a career uh, out of? Believe it or not, I think it was like when I, obviously I turned pro and I was like, man, okay, um, you know, I I think you know obviously there's levels in the in the professional leagues, so, so I was just like, man. And every fighter that was fighting had like a winning record. I never really, I didn't, my coach growing up, he was never about like getting easy fights. Cause he was like, yo, you're going to get to the big league one day. And you don't want that to be your first like mm, hard test, fought. Yeah. You want to, you want to get tested and have adversity before. So I just kept beating people who were, you know, who were, I guess I was not supposed to beat. And um, finally I was just like, man, like I got a chance to like do something great with my life. You know, I don't want to be working a nine to five, going to a, a bullshit job that I'm not going to be happy in. And, um, you know, watching my parents, you know, work their whole lives, you know, for people they didn't really want to work for. And that kind of motivated me to like, man, like, I think I got a chance to like help my parents get out of some of the situations. And that's what kind of like motivated me mm -hmm. the most. Uh, I was reading an article about you last night. I think it was on UFC.com about some of the other stuff that you've had to overcome. And I don't know how much you want to talk about any of that. But you, you've you've had to overcome some tough stuff, and I think uh, you you uh, I guess attributed your UFC debut and the performance to a custody battle that you yeah, were going yeah, through. Yeah. I mean, I'm, that's that's still ongoing, you know. Still ongoing. You know, I don't I don't get to see my son for shit. Never. Uh, yeah, I don't, you couldn't ask me anything about my son right now. Where does he live? All I know is he uh, in Colorado, either Boulder or Longmont, somewhere around there. Wow, how old is he? Five. Five. Yeah. And you have no contact with them. No contact with them. No contact. What's funny is that I I, uh, I, I tried to uh, get some information from his school. You know, I, I wanted to know his attendance, you know, what you know what he does at school. I just wanted to learn the basic stuff right. of my son. I call his school, and then I get a phone call from a detective. Oh. That was like, basically wanted to know why I'm calling the school for a, a kid. And I'm like, it's my son. And... Uh, it just goes to show how crazy it is that, you know, I call the school and I send proof that I'm his son. I send court documents. Look, like, I'm his dad, you know, regardless of what you get. And, man, they were rude to me. They were, you know, they just treated me like I was shit from the get-go. So it's, uh, you know, I deal with that on the daily. Uh, have you ever met him? Yeah, I've, I've, I've met my son. Uh, you know, I was in his life when he was, when he was first born. I was in his life for a total of three months when he was born, and then, you know, everything kind of went to shit from there. And was that the last time you saw him? No, no, no. I saw, I've saw him for, like, I think a total of, like, to be honest, I saw him for his, uh, like, I think second birthday. Okay. And then got to see him a couple times after that uh, at, like, these facilities, you know, where they, you know, monitor you and stuff like that, and got to see him for like a total of like 20 times okay you know, for like an hour yeah so i would say I'm, i've only been in his life for like 25 hours after that and that was it and and you can't like call him now right i can't yeah. call him hell no i'll get arrested <laughs> you'd be arrested probably why uh, shit tell the courts ask the courts okay and and uh because also in the same article it talked about so you you've spent some time in jail right yeah and what was that for uh shit for all kind of things for this I, is I it related a, to the story uh, yeah yeah okay. i got accused of a lot of heinous shit for for this you know i got accused of oh fuck man i gotta you know it's i don't want to really say that much but i i got accused of some really stupid shit and yeah man that um believe it or not man they they use the sport against me in a way you know that i was just this i guess loose cannon that's aggressive and I, you know, I guess it worked in a way. It got me custody taken and yeah. And how long were you in jail for? Uh, well, I was, they were trying to give me, 
uh, for certain situations. They were trying to give me a lot more time. Uh, so I went to jail originally for like a day or two. Then I had to bond out. And then that's when I started going through all the trials and, you know, all the courts. I had to start going through the system to just be in my son's life. But uh, I tell you what, they definitely want the money for sure. Mm. That's, it. that's the first thing they'll hit me up on. It's child support. Right. Of course. And, and and you say that like all the stuff that you were accused of didn't happen. No, no, no. Hell no. I didn't, you know, I wasn't perfect by all means, you know. I, you know, I had my own stuff that I was dealing with, you know, my own demons. But uh, yeah, the stuff that I got accused of, no, hell no. I wasn't raised that way, you know. And um, yeah. Do you feel as though one day you'll be able to have a relationship with him? I hope, you know. I'm, that's why I'm, I'm trying to do the best that I can now, you know. Like I said, I, by any means, I'm not perfect. You know, I know I, I did some stuff wrong, but the stuff that I was accused of, no, never that, you know, but I had to fix some things within my, you know, my own personal life. And I have, you know, and it's still a process. I'm still not perfect. Still, do, you, do you feel like you're in a better spot, though? For sure, you know. I'm still trying to figure this thing called life out, mm -hmm. you know. I think we all are, but... um. Yeah, I feel I'm in a much better place mentally. You know, uh, like I said, I still struggle every, you know, every day to be honest. But uh, I try to find a little positive things in there. What What do you feel like you struggle with? Huh. I don't know. Like again, like I always, yeah. Again, you know, the stuff that I got accused of, I was, I always was like, man, like, am I really that bad of a person? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, right. you, you like you ask yourself like. Like, damn, I got accused of some, like, shit. It's like, like, I wonder why, you know? And then it's like, man, am I really that bad of a person? You know, and you tell yourself something enough times, you start to believe it, you know? And so, but it took me a while. And I was just like, uh, you know, I'm not, after a lot of, like, life talks and stuff, I was like, man, I'm not, I'm not that shit person. Mm. I'm not, you know, and I refuse to, I refuse to let any situation or circumstance define my life. And uh, I live by that. And uh, I told myself never again will I let someone or any situation, again, or circumstance ever define who I am. So I and always look at it as like, you know, you make it through tonight, there'll be a right. better day. And you live in New Jersey, right? No, no, I'm from here. You're from New Jersey? I'm from New Jersey. Well, where do you live? In Colorado. You live in Colorado? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So I'm from New Jersey originally, and then moved down to Texas. And I was raised down there okay. my whole life. And then six years ago, I moved to Colorado, and I moved up there with my son, and then all that shit yeah. just, like, fell apart. And, uh, yeah, I've been up there ever since. Okay, I was trying to figure out, because I know you had ties to New Jersey, but then how were you training? Okay, so you still have family here? I do. I Did do. they come to the fight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And it so at least you awesome. had some people rooting for you. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, you, know, so. you know, I'm glad. You know, I got, you know, my 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 mom and dad, my girl and my and my my brother, they came up here, for, you know, to the fight. And nice. so, you know, it's, it's, it's nice when you have, you know, a really close support system close to you. And yeah, they were the only ones I repping the Colombian and Guatemalan flag. So it was it was nice to have them here and at MSG, you know? Yeah. It's a... Man, no Colombia or Guatemala, not a powerhouse in the world. Yeah. Uh, so who, who are we going for? A U.S.? Mm, yeah, of course. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know. Uh, Colombia, usually a powerhouse, but uh, not these days. So uh, I know I know that you mentioned it was Font, Cruz, and uh, who was the third one at the post-fight? Uh, Pedro Munoz. Pedro Munoz. Do you have, a, a, I mean, three greats, one legend, uh, Dominic Cruz, not sure about his status. Do you have a preference? And do you think that you will get a name of that caliber coming off this um, one? I don't know. I mean, I can just, all I all I can do is just ask for it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worst thing they can say is no. I mean, Frank Yeager, like, it would be good if you continue to <clears throat> yeah, make yeah, yeah, that climb. Yeah, of course. But what is it, undefeated in your last eight or something like that? You had the draw against uh, Cody. Cody Durden. One, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so you're on a roll. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> when do you want to return? Mm, soon, you know, soon. I'm sure you're not too banged up. No, no, I feel pretty good, you know, hands a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's part of it, you know, you get a little banged up. And by the way, what does the, the heart symbolize? 
I don't know, broken heart, I guess. Okay, you I know? wasn't sure because I was like, no. you are a little bummed over all of this, but uh, yeah, no, it's just a, it's just a shirt. Okay, just a shirt I wasn't sure shirt. if that was like your logo or anything <laughs> no. like that. Um, you know, Cody, no love. Um, no, no, just a broken heart, I guess. You know, I've been broken before. I've been broken hearted before. <laughs> right, but you see, you're in a good spot now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm in a lot. I'm in a better spot mentally, you know, than I was back in the day. So right. Well, uh, I wish you the best. Lovely to meet you. Congratulations on an incredible win, incredible moment. And uh, I, I hope that you're able to reunite with your son and that you know, you. things are able to turn around for you. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate in. it. Thank you. Yeah, all the best. Yes, sir. Thank, you. Thank you so much. There he is joining us. Massive win for him over Frank Yeager. Joe will walk you out over here. Uh, and uh, appreciate you making the trek into the city, my man. Yes.